YouTube family, what's the deal? It's your boy Chris Big Clean Cliff of Cliff World TV, man. Y'all already know how I'm rocking family. God know this, man. And today, man, I got a request. And man, fam, I wish I could find your comment, bro. But I get a whole lot of comments, a whole, whole, whole lot. But, bro, I heard you. Got you. Check, indeed. Today, we finna jump into the interesting lifestyle, an uh, introspective outlook. The journey, the trials, and the tribulations of Atlanta, Georgia's own, of course, Hood Rich Pablo One, man. Yeah, man. Free that boy, Hood Rich Pablo One. Make sure y'all jump in the comment section right now and say, Free Hood Rich Pablo One. Y'all already know if Hood Rich Pablo One was free right now, he'd be dripping with that new fashion they got right now. So, y'all already know what y'all can do, man. Get your snacks, get your doobie. Kick back like we finna watch a movie, man. This boy Chris Big Clean Cliff Dog of Cliff World TV. We finna get straight into it. Hood Rich Pablo One was born Sterling Leroy Penix Jr. October 1988. And according to Pablo One, he initially got his nickname from his neighborhood pals. They were later developed into Pablo One after he started getting money. Now, Hood Rich Pablo One would grow up in a Muslim household, man. Unlike many of his friends around whom were Baptist, Pentecostal, Seven Day Adventist, and Christians, Hood Rich Pablo One's household served Allah. So no BLT sandwiches getting served in that house, at least not the pork version, probably the turkey. Nah. Contrary to popular belief, because we all know Hood Rich Pablo One holds it down for Atlanta, Georgia, Hood Rich Pablo One was actually born in Newark, New Jersey. Now, due to his father getting in trouble with law enforcement at the age of three years old, he and his family would pack up and move straight to Counter Road in Atlanta, Georgia. Now, it's alleged that Hood Rich Pablo One's father, Sterling Leroy Penix Sr., lived the treacherous lifestyle, man. The one that Hood Rich Pablo One really didn't go into much detail about, but allegedly his father had a thing with banks and guns. Allegedly. Now, I'm just putting that allegedly out there. Now, Hood Rich Pablo One's father would have a change of heart and he would start to serve our life when he one day became security for the Honorable Louis Farrakhan in the Nation of Islam. Best Big, dude, uh, security for Farrakhan. For real? Farrakhan helped him change his life over. What was it that happened that made him fucking flip the switch? Uh, yeah. I'm not, I'm, to be real, uh, when you get that knowledge, like anytime you get some real knowledge, you suck it in. Right. Like even math, before you know what two plus two is, when they teach you how to do it, you gonna wanna know how to get to four plus four. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Unless you just retarded and say, all right, that's it. So, you know, anybody, he, he got the knowledge and ate it up. According to Hood Rich Pablo One, even in his younger days as a teenager, he was one of the first to ever come around wearing designer drip. And he was a street chemist, so he was the first to come around with designer goods that are often sought after by rappers. Now, kids, don't do drugs. Kid, nobody don't do drugs. Listen to me when I tell you. Don't do drugs. I gotta say this because the next clip I'm about to play, but kids, disclaimer, because they will demonetize this video. Kids, do not involve yourself in illegal substances. Adults, don't involve yourself in illegal substances. This is an educational documentary on an autobiography on the rapper Hood Rich Pablo One, in which case I'm gonna play the next clip. Don't I do I was, drugs. I, I, Still is. Like, Nigga, fuck not to say that, but I think I was one of the first. You can ask the hood, though. The hood gonna tell you that. I was one of the first drinker, sorry. But, you know, I don't really, I ain't too big on trying to run back and say who did what first. But yeah, I've been sitting for a minute, activist. Now, the name Hood Rich Pablo One, as I stated before, comes from his homeboys, his buddy pals, his player partners, and they gave him that nickname because his name was PJ. And they just go ahead and added Pablo One to it. Now, according to Hood Rich Pablo One, he always been a fly individual, always been drippy, and he always had aspirations to be rich. So he took on a personality 
of a rich person at a young age. Now, he was always known for popping this, you feel me? He was always known for just being one of the flyest guys in the neighborhood. So, of course, just like in all the other neighborhoods across America, the young fly guy is often pursued and pushed and encouraged to just go ahead and be the rapper and represent the hood. And that's just what Pablo Juan did. Now, when he got into that booth, to no one's surprise, everybody was feeling it. I started rapping from the hood. I mean, hood, my name Hood Rich Paulo Juan because I feel like I was a, a, a rich hood person. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I was a hood. I always was in the hood, me and my mama, but I felt like we was going to be rich. I had a rich spirit. so. But I started rapping because, to be honest, I was always the fresh person. And people used to just tell me, get in there, let me, let me get in there. When I did it, they loved it. So I always kept rapping like, Kind of like dude just came here, like I never asked anybody, do you like this? Mm -hmm. Nah, they always just, it might be Peso playing my music, not saying Peso, cause you know, but anybody, it might be him playing my music for me and you like, you know what I mean? It just graduated on his own. So I, you, never, you, I never forced it on anybody. I did a, a little bit when I was very, probably like 20 maybe or something, but I stopped and went full fledged in the street cause I also kind of was one of the people who felt like, Rappers is boogie, bro. They ain't got no money. It's really somebody doing this for them. They lying. You know what I mean? So I, I ain't want to be a liar and just be, in which I wasn't even when I was rapping back then, because I was rapping about Bally and doing this and that, and I was doing it. But I just felt like being street was cooler than being a rapper. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Back then. But I kind of graduated. Like, if you had me now, shit, bro, being rapping is the best and coolest thing that can ever happen to me. A black man, or whatever color you are, because it's like you give you a chance to express yourself, and people, people, people accept you for expressing yourself. Now, Hood Rich Pablo One would also be one of the founders of NPR, short for Money, Power, and Respect, which would include NPR Tito, RX Hector, RX Peso. And of course, Hood Rich Pablo One. Now, although Hood Rich Pablo One had his own crew, NPR, you'll still see him with like MPA or even Lil Baby, but most often, Lee, you'll see him thugging with the Migos. Migos, one of my favorite rap group. Well, they definitely my favorite rap group, and they also individually one of my favorite rappers. Like, they're in the top, goddamn, at least seven, I say, with all three of them. Right. Yeah, you had mad songs with him too. How do you uh, get into knowing him that well? Just, just like with me, it ain't too big. You just run into somebody and know him. Like you know what I mean. In Atlanta, we don't look at we don't look at stars like stars. They just regular people. To, so when you say how do you get to know somebody like me, goes it's kind of like, huh? They just regular. Now, Hood Witch Pablo One would be a hard worker when it came to that booth. As a matter of fact, YouTube family, Hood Witch Pablo One has one of those signature flow patterns that almost kind of can't be mimicked. Now, you do have the guys in the DMV like Good New, you got Zan Man, you got Lil Dude. You can kind of hear remnants of Hood Witch Pablo One's flow there. But Hubert Pablo One has a signature flow and he had a crazy work ethic when he started to actually jump in that studio and take rapping serious. In 2015, Hurris Pablo One would drop a mixtape entitled Auto One. And again in 2015, he would drop a joint mixtape with Jose Guapo entitled Million Dollar Plug. He'd also drop again in the year 2015 with a six song EP entitled Guerrilla Warfare. Now this was when I first got put on the Hood Rich Pablo One. He had songs on there like Trapper No Strap, Strap On Me, Brand New Chopper, and then The Six. Now, in 2016 is when Pablo One would really start to make noise and he had dropped Master Sensei. Now, Master Sensei was the one that kind of put everybody on Hood Rich Pablo One, particularly the song Fortress, where he raps and he has similes referring to the song Will of Fortune while he's just looking fly driving the golf court, man. Hey, y'all make sure y'all go check that video out, bro. That's probably one of my favorite Hood Rich Pablo One songs and videos. Now, Hood Rich Pablo One would also collaborate often with Pee Wee Longway, and him and Pee Wee Longway had a song that kind of went viral called African Diamonds. Yeah, Hood Rich Pablo One and Pee Wee Longway were kind of like one and the same 
when it came to not really taking music serious, but them both having crazy different flow patterns. Again, jump in the comment section y'all want to hear Pee Wee Long Way Untold Story. But in 2016, you would see Hood Rich Pablo one often with that boy CJ Casino from Fort Worth, Texas, and even those two came together and did a joint mixtape. Now, on August the 15th, 2017, the Atlanta rap legend Gucci Mane LaFleur signed Hood Rich Pablo 1 and Lil Wap to his 1017 Eskimo imprint. He officially made the announcement on his Instagram feed, posting an image of both artists accompanied with a caption congratulating the two. Both Pablo and Lil Wap called Atlanta home. And at the time, they were gaining a lot of popularity throughout the region. It's kind of crazy to see how all this played out because I know y'all seen how Lil Wap look now. Bro, shame on you and your grandmother. Shame on you and your grandmother. But nevertheless, Rich Pablo won, found himself right at home amongst one of the iciest jewelers in the game. Gucci and the Flood. And as y'all already know, YouTube family, Pablo One would hit the scene running with the new co-sign. Shout out to Cool Up, you know, we 1017, new label situation. So, like, okay, let's go through everything right now. So, Hood Rich situation. This, is this Hood Rich dealing with Rip and DJ Scream and all of that? Or? For sure, that's my family. Okay, that's my family too. Yeah. So, how'd it start? Uh, how did what start? Like, the whole Hood Rich, because I, I, I heard, like, you were kind of behind, like, the, the whole, basically the whole movement, like, the name and everything. No, no, no. Uh, I think they might be getting me confused with my older brother. But I was, when I was, I was young compared to them, but I was watching all of them. So they were always with my family. I never rapped or nothing. Like, they already had to rap, the DJ, everything set up. And I was just watching, watching, but I always liked Courage Pablo One. Although born in Newark, New Jersey, he holds it down for Chandler Road all the way, but he always admits that soon as he got some money and got on with the rap stuff, the first place that he visited was the DMV. So Hoodrich Pablo One definitely made an imprint on the DMV culture and he also took influence from the DMV culture as well. From that's all we seen, you see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that's the story that you finna hear. You well, know? I always heard like Pablo early in your career, sort of went to the DMV, spent a lot of time there, got hella tapped in, and sort of like were influenced to a certain degree by some of the flows that were coming out of there, and that that was the first place where you kind of really started to blow up. Is that yeah, accurate? For sure, for sure accurate. But me, I'm not big on credit. Like, I'm not the type of person that's gonna say, these people got my flow, or I feel like shit, when somebody sees something they like, like if I see something I like, the way you dress, or whatever you're supposed to like and you're supposed to try to gravitate even if you see a girl right now like damn she fine I like the way she did that you might want your girl to do a little bit of that and mm -hmm. it don't make you know follow her nothing just mean you smart enough to pick up on game you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying so dmv is the first place and i did it, it's still a lot of love out there no 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 cap like but you know it's, it's haters everywhere too so it just be it, it's situations it's life but then you're right that i did get a lot that's my second home still you know what I'm saying I came to LA after that. I ain't never been nowhere. Like when I was rapping, before I was rapping, I ain't never been nowhere. Counter Road, my city. When I started rapping, DC was the first place. Uh -huh. Then they, you know, I started seeing like I got love, so I, I showed love back. Boom, LA was the next place. You know what I'm saying so. Rich Pablo One would also be one that you can always see a new chain, a new charm, a new pendant, white gold, yellow gold, rose gold, tri-color, VVS, flawless diamonds, F-color, D-color. Hey, you always seen Hood Rich Pablo One with glaciers dripping off of his neck. It almost seemed as though he got that money from somewhere else. That couldn't have been the rap money because Hood Rich Pablo One had damn near just about as much ice around his neck as Gucci Mane LaFleur. So it goes without saying. Hurrich Pablo One was holding it down for the new 1017 Eskimos because he took that Eskimo part literal. Yeah, 500 pair you want these. Rich shit on you. Trap Lord do that fancy shit. Huh? You know what I'm saying? By the way, I'm just, you know what I'm saying? I'm having, like, just, yeah, like, these just the regular sneakers. You know, I really wear the diamond. I'm just like, you know what I'm saying? You just be having shit, just keep 
Now, after signing to Gucci Mane's 1017 label, Hood Rich Pablo won with running to a series of unfortunate events. One of the first, it seems like he was just a target, an easy target that may be for robberies, man. He got robbed like three times, and we just gonna go through each one in chronological order. Now, the first time he got robbed, it was said that he got laid down by some Jamaican and I tell him Bumba Clap Pussy while they're done. Me a find a Bumba Clap Diamond Exchange, you don't tell me about you done know. Yeah, they say the first time that it actually happened, sketch report of the guy that had allegedly relieved Hood Rich Pablo one from those African diamonds around his neck was a man that looked like Movado mixed up with Beanie Man. Now, the second time that a Hood Rich Pablo won assault slash robbery went down, and I this time I started to feel bad for him. Hood Rich Pablo won had intervened in a situation that really didn't have nothing to do with him. As a matter of fact, R.P. the Gunu. Y'all jump in the comment section if y'all want to hear a Gunu untold story. Shout out to the DMV. Shout out to all my partners in the DMV holding it down, man. But uh, yes, Gunu was in a situation. And Hood Rich Pablo won. I observed that his friend was in a situation and he came out and tried to help. And he got relieved from the African diamond. No, that's my problem. I still think I'm regular and everybody don't think I'm a star. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, yeah, that kind of uh, brings us to part of the DMZ conversation or before. When I heard the story of how you fell out with uh, Goo and Dude, that basically was how it was told to me is Pablo tried to basically mediate a situation <clears throat> yeah. and tried to squash some shit and it didn't work out yeah what happened was i'm gonna tell you the whole story y'all want to know okay boom. okay with me in dc dc and dmv the whole town loved me you see what i'm saying even the people who act like they fuck pablo this and that at one point y'all was a pablo fan asking for a feature mm -hmm. you see what i'm saying facts so even the people on your team i know them i know people personally like the people y'all talking about, I know one of them personally from the streets, and you coming to get shit and meeting. We actually know each other. When I came to DC, not my first time, but like my second time, we rode up here like two, three sprinter vans. The your manager, you know what I'm saying? I don't even speak names, but the manager, the person you whoop the whoop, who was actually there, used to gave me goddamn. Business while I was in DC, gave me a free pint of lean, got them hip blow, make sure you scrape right here. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So I be really knowing niggas. Fuck out of what a nigga think. So boom. When they came to DC, the whole DC loved me. But when I tried to sign the artists, you know I was signing the artists, putting niggas on. Can't mm -hmm. nobody ever put me on. Like I was told from me to me, from the niggas who I know who really in the street, they were like, blow, you know everybody love you. He was like, only thing happened was when you sign or, or gravitated toward them it made certain people who know they're not right or hate them or don't like them they couldn't fuck with you no more All of so sudden, instead of having the, the whole beef, yeah. streets now you got half of them you got half mm -hmm. niggas who looking at you like why you fucking with them niggas which me personally i never knew mm -hmm. i i never knew y'all was internet beefing with people Cause it wasn't no real beef to me. So if you going back and forth on a nigga on the internet saying, fuck you, oh, I'ma catch you, I'ma kill you. I didn't even know that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So when I'm shopping and shit, it will run up and catch you for that shit you were doing. But I didn't even know it. I'm, when I'm walking up, I got bags in my hand from Rodeo, Dior store. I'm like, what the hell's going on? Woo, woo, woo. And they call my name like, nah, bro. You know what I'm saying? They know me. Nah, bro, they're between me and bro. Even then, I'm not that type of nigga. Like I just told you, are you ready to? I'm always ready. Very, there was also another incident after Hood Rich Pablo won got relieved of them African diamond tennis chains when he was shopping inside of what appears to be Icebox Jeweler. Shout out to Icebox. One day I'm gonna give me one of them Icebox chains. And uh, yeah, Hood Rich Pablo One was approached by a vigilante Southside Decatur thug, man. And he was really seeming like he was trying to put pressure on Hood Rich Pablo One. It just seemed like a lot of people just trying to bully him around this time. Yeah. 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 
you, you feel me? I'm gonna ask you about some business, nigga. That's what I'm saying. If I ain't fuck with you, nigga, I wanna ask you about no business, nigga. Hey, did I just say you ain't fuck with me, bro? Hey, what? What is you talking about? What you mean, what? What you talking about? What you mean, what? Nigga, don't be getting no more from the lie, nigga. That's what I'm telling you. Who the hell you talking to? No, 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 we don't. Yeah, we good, 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 we good. I was just having a conversation. No, we good, we good, we good. No, we good, we good, we good, we good, we good, we good. We good, we good, we good. 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 We now, the GPS community, the Atlanta goons, the Atlanta booty dogs, the downtown Atlanta bandits, the rainbow clan, the skittle mafia with the ski mask guys must have heard about this incident that happened at the Icebox Jewelry Store because the next incident that happened to put man, listen, man, listen, I don't even know if this is true. I don't allegedly hood rich Pablo one was caught downtown Atlanta, Georgia and the assailants jumped out on them and made them script booty hole naked. No cap, no cap made them script booty hole naked. Now I can only imagine that the assailants that did such heinous vicious Attacks on Mr. Hoodridge Pablo One had to look like Big Frida. These guys had to look like RuPaul. They had to, bro, because why did y'all make them strip booty hole naked? Why didn't you just couldn't take the African diamonds? And this would cause Hoodridge Pablo One to blow a short circuit, and he would go ahead and kind of slick crash out for the internet, letting them know that he ain't going, and that all those rumors were negative. Tap about right now. That's what these niggas want to distract you from. They don't want me to get no money. Hood champ is out right fucking now. Y'all forgot? Duh, nigga, hood champ out, nigga. If I, if these, man, listen, I'm outside every day. Why the, you act like this shit is hard to be outside. Like, I'm just like, oh shit, they go goddamn. Man, y'all niggas with this fake ass internet shit. Y'all niggas is funny as hell, bro. Oh my daddy, nigga, y'all niggas is tripping. Y'all are funny as hell, bro. This on everything I love, I'm outside every day. I will see y'all my location every day. There's nothing scary about none of these niggas, bro. I ain't got no text on my face or nothing. This shit, I got a mohawk here. Right now, by the way, while y'all playing, yeah. Mohawk my drip. What the fuck is you talking about? I'm outside every day with a bankroll on. Nigga, I done took, I done took L before, but get what? Took a lot of L, I ain't got me an M. Bitch ass nigga, what you talking about? You saying my name though. And nigga, you rather say my name. That's how you gonna get burnt out, nigga. Stupid ass. Fried. Bring it if you Y'all fried. Well, whoever's going for this shit is fried. I'm in the Louis store. I just left my kid last night. And I get to get text talking about, is you all right? I'm like, damn. Y'all mother see how much I spent in Louis. They get to talk about, is you all right? Hey, hey. <laughs> Hey, look, I'm thinking they see how much I spent in Louis. Like, why you tripping? Y'all got, um, you just spent that. Uh, dumb, uh, they talking about a nigga on the internet with an old, an old ass watch, an all white AP. The fuck is you talking about, man? I got the big white two tone one, nigga with the boogers on it. Waffy had to fix one of the boogers, they fell out. Nigga, you stupid ass nigga. Right now, I got this one on. Yeah, Plain Jane, by the way, too. Sky Dweller. That's the Cartier. Rolling AP Cartier. Where do you see the new one I get? It's on my mama. Where do you see the new one that Wafi is making for me? Yeah, it's a whole 180. I ain't tripping, though. I just be telling niggas, just, just stop believing. I'm telling this to the nigga who, who, if you fuck with me, bro, stop believing everything you hear. I just told y'all this when I told y'all to read the book. I just said, read message to the black man of America, bro. Malcolm X taught you that. Don't believe nothing you can't. Touch with your own eyes. I mean, touch with your own hands. See with your own eyes or smell with your own nose. A nigga tell you right now, hey, Christmas, Christmas, Santa Claus coming. He coming down the chimney. Y'all bitch ass nigga listening with no type of, oh shit, who is Santa Claus? You ain't even say who is Santa Claus. You ain't even ask who Santa Claus was. You ain't ask why the fuck is this nigga fat as hell coming down the chimney. 
But you don't let a nigga lie to you and you going for it. You get to buy your kid present. Talking about, yeah, Santa Claus coming. You repeat. You you steady repeating lies like a bitch ass nigga. All y'all niggas some bitches, nigga. All y'all media, nigga. All this shit, nigga. The fuck is you talking about? Nigga talking about nigga rob, blow. You ain't rob. Shit ain't nobody rob. Nothing. That's a fact right there. Meanwhile. What? You know what I'm saying? Pussy ass nigga. Ain't no more Pablo run, nigga. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't even think, I don't think Gucci can get that back for you. You know what I'm saying? I don't think Gucci can get this. Get that back. Pussy ass nigga. My career over with. When you're talking about, I, I got jumped, I'm gonna be all right though. Shit been getting crazy late, boy. It really ain't here for me. I blame on your entourage. You feel what I'm saying? You pop them pussy if they ain't, ain't jumping. You had somebody with me? Man, you know niggas always got somebody with them, man. Ain't nobody walking around by their goddamn self. Shit, I just went to the club by myself. On gang. That's on gang. I'm talking about nobody. Well, I don't goddamn know. Niggas know them niggas in LA like to beat niggas up. Them niggas better goddamn say some boxing lessons or something. <laughs> I heard the one need no LA niggas. Well, what? Shit. I don't know. Um, they said it was some DC niggas or something. Oh, yeah, you know them fuck on plays. They probably had that wham bam on them, boy. The <laughs> fuck you talking about? <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> Hey man, I can't get mad. I salute the takers in the city, man. I was a taker once upon a time, so I can't knock a nigga hustle, man. Yeah, God yeah. damn, y'all ain't have to do it the mouth, but God damn. That's a that's nigga a goddamn That's the east side nigga, bro. Shit, back in the day nigga would've did it to him they down south. Anybody, really. Yeah, yeah. Man, yeah. Where big me's at? Somewhere in casino? Nah, that nigga had downstairs. Shout out to be gambling. Shout out to be gambling like a motherfucker. Man, that nigga lucky as hell. Too, that nigga went. Man, that lucky as fuck, but I be saying all that money. He be putting on that motherfucker. I be like, man, what the fuck, man? I need to get that down. At least got down close to 300,000 dollars, yeah. What the fuck? Back. Man, I went in the casino. First time, boy, I just played with you. Just see what you do. I lost five. Now, of course, y'all know Adam. Adam had to ask about the situation. As long as we're talking about all this, um, there was this viral sort of conversation between Nudie and 21 talking about one of your situations. Did you have issues with them before that, or was that the first time that you felt some disrespect coming in that way? Uh, nah, I ain't never had no issues with them before them. And even after that, when it happened, shit, goddamn, I had seen them. And like you said, shit, nigga, nigga, I told me nigga for nigga from the city of Atlanta was just a little disappointed in me, you know what I'm saying? But I don't know. Like you gotta ask them how they feel. When they come to me, I'm a man. I don't care about none of that shit. Nobody talking about I'm a man, bro. I got I got to feed, feed my kids and make it home. That's the only thing I know. So all that what somebody feel about Pablo, I don't think about nobody else to talk about you to even have your name in my mouth. You know what I'm saying? Mm. That's just me, bro. It was just weird because we're used to seeing a lot of unity, at least That's like publicly I mean, like, in Atlanta. Internet, like people doing internet stuff. Where I'm from in the street, the cold is silent. You know what I'm saying? And then if it ain't your business, you mind you mind your you know what I'm saying? Shit like that. That's just what I know though. Mm. So yeah, that was that was a weird one. Did you, so when Twenty One made a video and he was talking about how he had your jewelry, was that literal or was he just sort of fucking around? I don't. One thing about me, bro, I don't. I'm not even. I didn't even see the video to know what you're talking about. But I don't know. I'ma just say I don't know. Cause at the end of the day, I, I'm just not big on the internet to this day. Like a lot of shit that go on, somebody else tell me. Mm. Like I might be right here cool and cool and cool. And somebody who been looking at that shit can't help but to be like, bro, what the fuck going on with this? Mm. I'd be like, well, what? Then I have to be like, oh, okay, let me see. I don't for real. Because I just don't, I ain't just big on it. But And after this incident, Hood Rich Pablo won would almost seem to have a downfall. Pretty six suspects face more than 200 charges following a year-long Georgia gang investigation. Authorities in Georgia say 25 suspects have been arrested while 21 were presently at that time on the run. 
Georgia authorities say 46 people have been indicted following a year-long investigation into gang activities across multiple counties. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation says 25 have already been arrested while another 21 are on the run. According to the GBI, the gang task force was requested by Upson County District Attorney's Office in March 2019 to investigate connected crimes in Upsom, Fayette, and Spalding counties. Now, this investigation, it showed evidence of racketeering from the Rolling 20 neighborhood bloods, which operated throughout the state of Georgia, including Upson, Fayette, Spalding, DeKalb, Gwinnett, Richmond, Green, Telfer, and Washington County. Crimes that were tied to the gang include drug trafficking, assault, theft of money, and personal property conspiring assault inmates and recruiting gang members. Now, the suspects in the investigation that was facing charges at that time were facing 92 counts of racketeering, influenced in the Corrupt Organization Act, 59 counts of violations of Georgia Street Gang Terrorism Prevention Act, three counts of trafficking methamphetamine, three counts of trafficking heroin, five counts of possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony, three counts of possession with intent to distribute marijuana, five counts of felony possessing a firearm, two counts of financial transaction fraud, one count of conspiracy to commit financial transaction fraud, 24 counts of aggravated assault, four counts of kidnapping, four counts of battery, two counts of tampering with evidence, four counts of felony murder, four counts of conspiracy to commit armed robbery. Those arrested have been identified as Christopher Tyler Bennett, 24 years old at the time, Xavier Lamar Carter, 21 years old at the time, Ronald Eldwood Chapman, 53 years old at the time. Ronald, what the hell is you doing out there with these young folks? Tyree Deshaun Crossland, 27 years old at the time, Derek LeVar Ferguson, 41 years old at the time, Robert Freeman, 26. 26 years old at the time. Who named their baby Robert Freeman? That's crazy. Juan Miguel Golemaz Pandolaza, 25 years old at the time. Travis Allen Good, 31 years old at the time. Shimon Harris, 29 years old at the time. Charles Bradford Martin, 36 years old. Kenneth Patterson, 31 years old. Sterling Leroy Penix, a.k.a. Hood Rich Pablo One, 31 years old. Booked 10-21. 20. And before Hubbard's Pablo One went down for such charges, he and RX Peso fell out. His whole NPR team just depleted. It split up. And Gucci Mane came out publicly and said he don't want nobody signed to his label. This going to get mush, mush, robbed, corned on the cob, anything like that. I'm going to see if I can find it. I'm not y'all nigga got more money than me, man. Period. I'll put together. Oh my wife, nigga. Fuck you talking about broke ass, nigga. South ass, nigga. Nigga, I'm about to buy my wife a fifty thousand dollar ring. Nigga, ain't nobody gonna do a fifty million dollar ring. Nigga, nigga ain't even not even look at her finger, nigga. South ass, nigga, get shit took from y'all, nigga, left and right. Puss ass, nigga. Wanna be a preacher ass, nigga. Getting your life to God, South ass, nigga. Nigga, some hoes. Quarantine and that, nigga. Hello, Fuck all y'all motherfuckers, bro. But it like, you gotta try to always help the youth. You gotta try to reach out and help the younger Gucci's, the people who went help you. Them, that's my way of giving back. I ain't, I ain't giving to no charity not see it. I'm gonna help these young niggas. I ain't gonna sign to no fucked up deals. I'm gonna go out my way. I'm gonna have blind faith in them. Goddamn, I'm gonna tell them that right. Shit, if I make some, I make some. Shit, I ain't tripping. I, I make money doing shows and press selling my, selling my album. New 1017, so you starting completely from scratch because a year ago, so what about the Asian dolls, the Pablos, the Malls, the Quills, the everything you started? This everybody, everybody can have their contract and just go. I don't even, I, I lost four million dollars in the What Pablo did? Well, Pablo, I just don't, Pablo I just, do? he, 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 listen, Pablo, he, he independent now. He really lucky. 
I just listen. Everybody got down there. You can you can sign on the duct tape. You want to? I don't want no artist, bro. I got. I'm oh, doing a big you don't fact. Want no artist. See what I'm, I'm doing a big fact and shit show. I'm doing a big <laughs> facts and shit show. Yeah, man, you don't want yeah, no artist. You got to miss that. That hey. cow. You need to get Pablo, man. Bank is a media person. <laughs> hey, bank. Give me a hunger. Give me a hunger. Hey, bro, a hunger. I don't want no artist. I don't want Give no me artist. a hunger. Give me a hunger. What about the other two of y'all need? Mom, Quill, Asian doll, everything. Give me a million for all of that shit. I'll give y'all that shit. <laughs> give you a bill for it or you say you let them go? You just say you 500. let them go. 500. 500, <laughs> goddamn. 500. Which one is it? You say you goddamn. Let me make some of this shit back. Oh, uh, you'll put up a check on them phone. What happened? Four M's, but I ain't tripping about it. You know, I ain't. I have nothing bad to say about it. I'm like, be honest, they all wanted to leave. They always, they always say, man, you gonna spend no more money on me? You gonna let me go? I ain't spend no more money. Y'all can go. <laughs> that's where it's at. The only person I really got that I got is mom. Soft fat nigga and shit took from y'all nigga left and right. Puss ass nigga. Wanna be a preach ass nigga? Getting your light to God, soft fat nigga. This nigga's a hoe. So what's the real story? <laughs> Them folks say he tried to go out there gambling. He ain't like us, he ain't strapped up, nigga. Nah, I was playing, nah, he ain't tried to go out there gambling. Nah, he was up there by himself, y'all. Nigga. Hey, he tried to run. No, they, nah, he ain't even run. They just took the gun off of him. And took the gun off of him. Took the gun off of him. And then he, he just started pulling them off one by one. So, so did he take them off? He took them off one by one. one. On their neck. So who the niggas on him? Who the niggas on him? You ain't go back. You ain't go back. You ain't going back. Who? I won. I said you ain't go back with me. You said you won. Big dude fought him, man. He probably do wish he caught me now, shit. Big dude fought him. I wonder what Guwa got to say about this. Guwa probably like, again? Again? Come on. Again? You do try fighting, man. I can't do it right now. Come on, Mom. You can't be the one. So look, man. You know, they took the gun hey, off his hip. They took the gun off his hip. Once they took the gun, he took off the chain. And then, now after that, Hurwitz Pablo won would almost seem to be implicated in the death of Lil Baby's homeboy, Marlo. Now, apparently, allegedly, according to Atlantaology on Reddit, Hubert Pablo One got caught with the murder weapon of Marlo. And on top of that, Hubert Pablo One just recently signed for five whole years. In the feds, let me read the paperwork. Atlanta rapper Hood Rich Pablo One takes a plea to serve five years. Upson County appeared in multiple hip hop online reports recently in connection to the sentencing of Sterling L. Penix Jr., also known as Hood Rich Pablo One, for violation of Georgia's Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organization Act, resulting. From a negotiated plea, the Atlanta rapper was sentenced to 15 years with five to serve. A banishment from the Griffin Judicial Circuit, which includes Upsom, Pike, Spalding, and Fayette Counties. He also was offered to pay a $2,000 fine if he remained on probation when released from prison. Penix signed with Gucci Mane's 1017 Eskimo label, according to Hip Hop and More website, arrested in 2020, was part of a large gang-related investigation. Those indicted faced 92 counts of a RICO Act, 59 counts of violations of Georgia Street Gang Terrorism Prevention Act, three counts of trafficking methamphetamine, three counts of trafficking heroin, four counts of kidnapping, four counts of murder, 24 counts of aggravated assault. Penix, a.k.a. Hoodridge Pablo One, was sentenced December 1st. He was one of the first of the 46 alleged co-conspirators reportedly and was a member of the Rolling 20 Blood Gang, allegedly. Now, I know Hoodridge is not a member of the Blood Gang. A lot of just be throwing stuff on people now. After serving his prison term, his remaining sentence 
will be strict probation, which bans him from associating with any gang members or possessing any handguns. Now, according to TMZ, the 33-year-old rapper remained busy while incarcerated, and he's released three new projects since his arrest of October 2020, according to Hip Hop DX website. Now, most recently, he teamed up with Lil CJ Casino for the Hood Rich Casino project in March 2020. Three, man. Yeah, YouTube family. That was the story of Hood Rich Pablo One. Man, y'all jump in the comment section and say Hood Rich Pablo One. Free him right now. Yeah, and I know I made a couple jokes in this, but uh, Hood Rich Pablo One, I always mess with his music. I'm a fan of Hood Rich music, man. I'm a fan of the whole movement. So y'all jump in the comment section. Hood Rich Pablo One. Make sure he get free until it's backwards, man. It's with Crispy Clean Cliff. Y'all jump in the section. Let me know who y'all want to hear next, man. It's with Crispy Clean Cliff, man. Cliff World TV, man. As y'all already know, I'm gone. YouTube family. I'm going to need y'all to tap in with my girl here by Honey Man. She is CEO, loctician, beautician, all-around miracle worker out of Spokane, Washington. But if that bag is right... She will fly to you. Now, I'm telling y'all, I done seen her turn some solid tools into dimes. Some solid tools into dimes. Some weight at the back of the line, so you ain't got to wait in line. Said, man, if you need your retwist, if you need your edges laid, if you don't want to go outside looking play, man, because I'm telling y'all, some of y'all, I seen y'all out there last weekend, and you was looking a little crushed. And she do kids here, too. And I seen some of y'all kids' pictures, man. And, hey, man, on picture day, they here was nappy. So if y'all didn't have nobody to do it, I'm telling y'all, I'm putting y'all down right now. Hair by honey. Get your booking done right now. You can't let your appearance be the interference. Don't let your appearance be the interference, I'm telling you. Don't try to lay your edges yourself. It ain't going to work. Hair by honey. She is a professional. She does this for a living. Get your booking right now. It might be a line, but for the right dime, you might be able to jump the line. YouTube family, I'ma need y'all to tap in with my boy Mimosa, man, and mobbing with Mimosa and his podcast. Look, if you're in the greater Northwest area and you trying to get exposure, man, and you know you deserve that spotlight and your music really hidden, mobbing with Mimosa is the place to go. I'm telling y'all, man, he running the multimedia blog site and he'll pull up for the interview. He's been seen on camera with Big Sad 1900 collaborator Lil Booth out in Tacoma. And that interview went yay yay. He did an interview with XD Stacks, FTFKT, and man, he even got me and BBDL on the interview, man. Listen, if you're in the greater Northwest area and you want some exposure, I'm telling you, Vancouver, Tequila, Tacoma, Seattle, Kennewick, Royal Orange, Renton, Belltown, tap in with Mobby with Mimosa, man. He on the rise. I'm letting y'all know, man. He one of my guys. I'm putting a stamp on it. Look out for my with my most podcast and make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. Listen, make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. Don't inbox me any more links. If you in the greater Northwest area and you rap and you make music, I don't want to see no more links. Don't inbox me any more links. I need to see you on Mobbing with Mimosa's podcast. Then I'll pay attention. YouTube family, I'm going to need y'all to check out my boy Ari Young, man, coming out of California. He a streamer, he's a YouTuber, and he's an artist. Let's just say he's multi-talented. I mean, hey, the boy could be the next Constantinette. Twitch, holla at my boy, send him a bag. To everybody that be on Twitch, even Discord. Man, y'all need to holla at my boy Ari Young, man. This the wave of the future. Live streamers are creating a new millionaires, and I got faith in my boy Ari Young. I mean, he was smart enough to get the promo. Y'all make sure y'all tap into his show, Stay Cloudy. Subscribe to him on Twitch, Area. Man, look, he gaming, he doing music, he live streaming, blunt rolling contest, Mario Kart, you name it. Like I told y'all, this the wave of the future, man. Now let's jump into the video y'all been waiting for. Hey. Yeah, I'm pippin' like I'm done one I'ma stop at the store, sell me an onion Go and get some backwoods in the back of Funyun Let a nigga play me sweet and he gon' meet the honey bun I ain't ride with it unless he got a hundred round drum Hit that nigga with the drink, he gon' butt up out I'm bomb Hit her with the daddy stroke, I got the little baby sprung Gotta keep that thing on you coming from where 